You're watching Atlanta Small Business Profile with your host and small business expert, Ted Jenkin. Hey everybody, this is Ted Jenkin right here on the Atlanta Small Business Profile. And guess what is booming right here in Atlanta? It's construction. Whether you're in the city or you're in the suburbs, you are seeing buildings going up all over the place. So I'm excited today to have on CEO Seth Chanley. He's one of the largest construction companies right here in Atlanta, Chanley and Sons Construction. And I wanna know, uh, at the start of this thing, like it's such good times in construction right now. I mean, I swear, every piece of dirt that I see, I feel like something's being built. Maybe. How did you get into the construction business? You know, uh, I was kind of born into it, whether I wanted to be in it or not. Uh, and uh, it's been traced back all the way to the 1500s, really. Is that right? Uh, that every male in our family, every generation has has been involved the in Chanley construction. The Chanley family's been involved in construction for 500 years? As long as we can trace it back. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I think it even goes prior to the 1500s, but I'm like, at what <laughs> point does it matter at that point in time anymore, you know? So, so you're just genetically disposed to do this. I thing. guess so, because when I was, I was five, I remember asking, uh, the teachers would ask, what do you want to be? And all the kids are saying a fireman or a police officer, all the <laughs> typical stuff. And I just knew I wanted to be a builder, but I didn't know how. I just uh, had it in my head, but yeah. So when did you start your first construction company? You know, I started a flooring company uh, when I was 17 years old. 17, 17 years, years old. old. I was still in school and I was working summers and after work uh, and we were putting in hardwood floors in Reynolds Plantation oh, on Lake yeah. Oconee. Sure. Uh, and I probably did four or 500 homes there. We did it for a long As time. As a teenager. As a teenager. Uh, I was passionate. I didn't. I knew how to do the work. I was skilled at it because I'd apprenticed uh, during the summers. Right. Uh, and the need was there, and I had about ten employees uh, and just rock and rolled until. So is this a family business today? Do you work with your dad, or is there other family? Because when you it know, says Chanley and Sons. Right. Right. Uh, it was actually Chanley Construction in 2005. My father was a developer with Buckhead uh, International Partners. Okay. Uh, he, in that partnership, he was getting out of it, and I approached him to see if he wanted to do something together. He told me I didn't know enough, uh, and, he, <laughs> and he didn't want to do it, but he didn't know I knew how to make money yet either, I don't think. So when he saw that, he uh, he's like, okay, I'll come on board, but I want it Chandley and Sons. <laughs> and of course, you know, I fought that for, for a good six months, and he's like, what about your, your brothers? What about your sons one day, son? And you want to leave a legacy? And I finally let him convince me into it. But And that's what got the name. That's what got the name. But everybody still believes. I, I grew up learning from my, from my father, and that's, they can believe it. But. When, you, when, you, <laughs> when you work with a client and they start a project, maybe it's a retail space or you're building out an office floor or you're starting a whole brand new building, mm -hmm. how does that collaborative design process work? Because everyone's got different budgets and different ideas on how they want to do their space. You know, that process works with identifying that client's need, what their timelines are, what their budgets are, and really sitting down to understand their overall need. And then we try to either put it together on a preliminary plan set for them to approve, right. or they already have an architect and we tweak things. So it's really understanding everything that they really want and need and what they can afford with what they want and need. Uh, and then we put it all together with the best fit for that client. It becomes choices sometimes. Maybe you get the hardwood floors, but you can't get the lighting the way that you want it. You Correct. just got to make choices depending upon your budget. Or we, instead of a, a solid hardwood floor, we can do an LVT or an LVP. It looks just like it. You won't know. So then you can, you can create value that gives them the same look and finish and feel that is less expensive, but no one really knows it. And that's is, what we try to do a lot when, when the budget's still This fit. is why you go to the experts. This is that's why you right. go to the experts. Yeah. Now, I think one of the things that you're doing that's revolutionary is there's a lot of people when they are going to engage with a construction company are always thinking about, I'm going to get ripped off. They're going to take Correct. me hand over fist for money. But you've developed this process now or you're using this process called lean construction. Correct. What is it and how is it changing the industry, Seth? I honestly believe lean construction will be the preferred traditional method in the next five to ten years. Right now it's still not as known by banks and lenders, so they try sure. to force people into the three-bid competitive method. Uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies and issues there that people run into. So the lean construction prevents that. It holds accountability for the, for the team the day it's established. You're not giving one person full control right. over the design, the, the cost, the construction, because when you hire a design team, they don't necessarily know what things cost. They just know how to make it look cool and awesome. Right, right. All right, but what does that actually cost to do? So if you bring a GC in as a partner, 
bring an architect in as a partner, they work as partners, and you have a client here that's working with that team, we've now prevented the need to, to design something over budget, to have to go back and, and work our way back through it to get to a budget, and you've kept this, these two people from fighting because you put them together, uh, and now everyone's happy. And it, it just works a lot better. It's a lot quicker. It's a lot more efficient. It's the cheapest way, in my professional opinion, that you can build. Has technology changed your business a lot? The fact that now you can do 3D drawings, and now even today, I mean, they've got these print, the printing machines where you can actually print stuff. Uh, yeah, has, cool. has that changed the construction business a you lot? Yeah, I think it has. I, th I think what it does is, is if you're not involved in it, you're you're kind of outpaced by those who are. You have to stay involved with the newest technology because clients expect it. You know, we're not building, we're not, we don't have a horse and drawn carriage anymore. We're, we have right, these technologies, right. let's use them. Uh, and we, we personally invest in a lot of those technologies and we have a product called Raken that now from our cell phone gives clients automatic instantaneous reports every day. Uh, that every let, day? Every day, that whether they want it or not, they're getting a report, they're mm -hmm. getting pictures, inspection reports, they're getting updates, they know the schedules, whether it rained for three hours or one, they know everything and that's been an issue in the past. You know, clients want to know what's going on with their projects. I feel like almost every month I hear somebody who has a horror story with a construction company. So there are a lot of them. if you're talking to somebody today and saying, you need to watch out for these couple things that could yeah. really be things that open your eyes when you hire sure. a contractor, what would you say someone needs to look out for? I would look out for, first off, do your due diligence into their reputation, okay? Because reputation's big. There'll be clear signs. Uh, you know, go online, look them up, look at the Better Business Bureau, look on the Secretary of State website, see if they're legitimate, uh, ask around about them. And then secondly, if you do use them to, to bid on your project, get, be thorough about that, that bid. Uh, if they're not breaking things down, if they're throwing some number that seems too high, there's a reason why. Either they don't want the job or they're throwing a number to see if it sticks in the air, but you need to be due diligent and break down every single line item of scope and have those compared to make sure you're not getting into a bad situation because it is notorious in the business that that a low bidder comes in, underbids projects, you're halfway right. through construction and you're double your budget, double your timeline, and you're wondering what happened. Right, or a lot of people, and this I've seen this happen, they underbid a project, Correct. only to know that they're gonna have to tell the client it costs more once they're halfway through the project, and mm -hmm. then the client's like, wait a minute, I thought the bid was gonna be, that yeah. happens a lot though, doesn't it? Happens it happens all the time, and we get clients that come in literally every other week that have those stories, and some have even fired their GCs halfway through, brought us in to figure out the mess, to figure out who's not been paid, to, to almost do like a forensic accounting of, of the jobs. Which We've, is hard sometimes. Well, it is, because you have to find out everyone who was involved, who was paid, who was not, uh, chase down liens, and then, but we've been successful bringing those clients back, and we've had clients in the past that didn't choose us over a grand or two, and they would call us back three months later, I wish I'd have chosen you, I'm now 200,000 right. over budget, my job's not built. Darn it. Seth, and it's how, like do you, you how do you grow a business like yours now when the labor market is so tight? You know, one of the things that happens that is exciting in business is that unemployment's at three and a half percent. Money is cheap right now, so yeah. people can basically go uh, do new construction. Mm -hmm. But when you have to find what you're talking about, either employees or those subs to do the jobs, yeah. how do you build a stable of people when the labor market is tight? You know, that's a good question. Uh, and I don't think there is a perfect way for that, but I believe if you're established and you have subs and crews that specifically uh, work for your company, that uh, if they're taken care of, they stay and they'll grow with you, okay? So we, a lot of our subs have started as smaller companies when we right. started, and they've built and grown with us, but they normally only service our company. Uh, so we've not had that problem per se on the labor side, we have had, uh, the need to find higher skilled project managers, right. which highly skilled project People managers, run it day to they're, day. they're 150 minimum $200,000 a year <sighs> guys, but they're worth it. And if you hire an $85,000 a year guy, he may lose half a million on the first job he does and you could have just paid for three more, you know, $200,000 guys. So we're always looking. 150,000 folks, you might think about skipping that college degree <laughs> there, it might be a good, pl good place to work. We, I want to know. Well. I want to know. I've seen you drive around in this, but I mean, you <laughs> might have the largest truck in Alpharetta. I don't know, but it's it's big. 
It, did you buy the truck because you love the truck or is it part advertising that people see you? I mean, why did you choose that truck? You know, that's a funny story. That that <laughs> truck, we were building all the Enterprise rent-a-cars in, in Georgia and uh, they came to us with a fleet, E-Fleet. And one of our biggest clients, Enterprise, the president said, hey, have you ever heard of E-Fleet? And of course, we had an old fleet of cars and trucks that we kind of <laughs> mismatched. Here's a Ford, here's a, here's a Toyota, whatever. And uh, they got us into all brand new uh, Dodge Ram trucks. And at that time, we ordered so many that they said, what would you want? And I'm used to driving the same truck the guys are. I didn't care, but uh, they, they built that truck for me. Uh, had it taken the Southern off-road, lifted it, did everything you could think of, and then I'm just delivered this truck with zero miles on it that's uh, <laughs> need a high. ladder to get into. But uh, it's only for work, and you know, right. the advertisement's good. I, I hope it works. It you, I guess like you noticed it. It, so. <laughs> it seems like it is working, and, yeah. and you obviously run a very stressful business too. You've got lots of projects going on. How do, do you how do you break off the stress as an entrepreneur when you need to get away from it all? You know. Uh, there is a, uh, I actually blow my yard, I believe sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> right? I put my, my backpack blower on and I just, I'll be out there for an hour, even though our landscaper does it, I'll do it anyways. And, uh, and that's my time to just think and not think about anything. Um, but I'm, I feel I'm, we're blessed as a company. We have a great staff. We, yeah. have, we have the best team that we've had ever since we've started in 2006. Well, congratulations on the success. Thanks for coming on the program Thank today. You. And folks, Construction, it's just like your business. You've got to get the right blueprint to get the right building built for yourself. So get that blueprint right one time, the first time before you start a business. I'm Ted Jenkins, right here in the Atlanta Small Business Profile. Thanks for watching Atlanta Small Business Profile with Ted Jenkins, part of JBF Business Media.